Hello everyone and welcome to another Router Gods video. My name is Humphrey Chung. This video is going to talk about the most common problems that people will face when running GNS3.NET files coming from the internet. We're looking at a .NET file that has been made on Windows and we'll talk about, we're going to talk about the differences between Windows and Linux .NET files as well. Okay, so common problems. Uh, not so common problem, this one right here, this IP address that's probably so mysterious to a lot of people, that points to a hypervisor which is actually running the virtual routers. In most cases here, it's going to be 127.0.0.1, that port is 7200, and that's fine, just leave it as it is. If later you want to run this on Rackspace, you actually can, it's very easy, and I'll be making a video about that very shortly. Actually, the video is already done, I just need to render it. Another problem people have, uh, this is not a very uh, pressing problem, it's not going to cause your GNS to crash. This working directory is where the temp files will reside. Now, if you don't have this particular working directory, it will kind of make one on its own, and uh, it's not going to be a big deal. You're not going to crash because your working directory is not set correctly. In my case here, as I recommend to everyone with 8 gigs of RAM or more, make a RAM drive, call it G or whatever, and point your working directory towards that RAM drive. It's going to make your life a lot easier, a lot less headaches, and your GNS3 will run extremely fast. Okay, the main deal where people have a problem, where things will crash, is this image path. Okay, this image path has to be exact. So the path here, that's the path, and the file name both have to match. Now it may may seem obvious, but if you're a Windows guy, notice this path right here, that's the full path. C colon slash user, so on, so on and so forth. Obviously, my path is gonna be different from your path, and that's because your computer name is going to be different, okay? Unless for some cosmic coincidence, you're running your computer and you called it Lenovo Sandy Bridge as well, and your whole directory structure here is the same, uh, this is not going to work for you. Also, this image name has to be exact. So most people aren't running the exact same images. Uh, so even though I recommend to people, everyone get the 3725 image, uh, you might be running regular enterprise version. Uh, you might be one off, like instead of T13, you're T14. So if those don't match, uh, GNS3 is going to scream at you. Another thing is if you're a Linux guy or... Uh, if you have received a .NET file from a Windows guy, so you're on Linux, you got one from Windows, notice that your image file here, your whole directory structure is different. And you should know this if you're a Linux guy. And also the slashes that your system uses, the direction of the slashes are different. And that's where things definitely bottom out is because Windows uses slashes one way and Macs and Linux uses slashes a different way. Okay, so that's that's a big deal there. So always always look at at this stuff. If you see the slashes going the wrong way, not a big deal really. All you have to do is do a, a search and replace. However, you're in whatever uh, text editor you're in in Linux, search and replace, change the directory structure, change the way of the slashes, and you're off and running. Okay, let's take a look at some other things. Idle PC is another thing you definitely should change. Once again, uh, this will not crash your system. It'll just make it really slow. So, you know, you're going to use whatever idle PC you already have set. Do a search and replace. If you, if you need to, go ahead and watch the previous video on how to do a mass search and replace with Notepad++, and I'll show you how to do it. Okay, these configs here. If you don't get the config path right, your GNS3 topology will still run. Everything will work fine, except when you do show IP int BR, you'll notice that you don't have any IP addresses. If you don't have IP addresses, that is a 100%, well, I'll say near 100% uh, chance that you did not get the config path right. Okay, so this is very important. The path has to be right, and also the name has to be right. What you'll see a lot of times is instead of CFG, the text is the file is called text.txt. Okay. Uh, also, case may matter in this case, so just make sure you have everything correct. 
Now, obviously, if you don't have any configs, that's uh, you know that's also going to be a sure sign of not getting any uh, IP addresses or any other configs in that router. Let's take a look at the Linux version. Pretty much the same. In this case, I've got a full path to the file. Now, the config files themselves, uh, they can go on Linux and Windows without changes because all it is, it's a text file. Okay, everything else the same. Notice that we would have to change the config path for every single router if you're going to change it. And that's not too bad because everything before here is the same. Also, another big thing is a lot of people will change the first hypervisor and they forget to look down and see that there's a second hypervisor down here for many of the CCIE topologies. So you're going to change that. Now you just cannot, you cannot do a copy paste from the top to bottom here. That won't work. And the reason that won't work is because you've got this UDP port here. It's a really, really big deal. You notice that UDP port is going to be different than the UDP port up here. Okay, so right there I've got 7200. Down here I've got 7300. Now they don't have to increment by 100. Uh, sometimes what I like to do is I'll increment by one. So 7200, 7201, 7202, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so that's the only big gotcha on that one. So I guess you could, you could do a copy paste from the IP address down to ghost iOS and you could paste it down here and then just change this port number to be something different. And that's about it. If you have a GNS3-data in your .NET file, some people do, some people don't, just make sure the configs is pointing to the correct path. And all it is is it's going to be, if you have configs in your routers, it's going to be that part right there. That initial part to the path. All right, that was a quick video of the most common problems you will have in GNS3.NET files. 80% of your problems are going to be because you did not set the path to this correctly. And usually the other 20% of the time I see problems with the incorrect path to the configs. All right, once again, my name is Humphrey Chung with Router Gods. Thanks for watching.